The Wright R3350 duplex cyclone engine was a monster of the skies. An 18-cylinder, twin-row radial engine designed to haul massive bombers across oceans and fuel America's air dominance in World War II. Developed by the Curtis Wright Corporation, it powered iconic aircraft like the B-29 Superfortress, the Douglas A-1 Sky Raider, and later, civilian planes like the Lockheed Constellation. On paper, it was a marvel of power and design. In reality, it carried secrets, some dangerous, some tragic, and some that forever shaped aviation history. What was sold as the future of aerial power came with an underside of overheating issues, engine fires, and a trail of lives lost in the quest for speed and range. Let's uncover the shocking truth behind the Wright R-33 Fivesol, an engineering gamble that flew high and burned hot, the vision and the rush to build. In the late 1930s, with global tensions brewing, the United States needed more than just fighters. It needed bombers that could carry heavy payloads over vast distances. The Army Air Corps issued ambitious specs and Wright Aeronautical E a division of Curtis Wright, answered the call with the R-3350. At the time, it was one of the most powerful radial engines in the world, boasting 3,150 cubic inches of displacement and capable of producing over 2,200 horsepower in early versions. The duplex cyclone wasn't just big. It was a layered system of complexity. Two rows of nine cylinders, dual superchargers, and a forced air cooling system. But therein lay the problem. Too much complexity, rushed development, and not enough time to work out the kinks. A B-29's worst nightmare. The R-3350 made its combat debut in the legendary Boeing B-29 Superfortress, the same bomber that dropped atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But behind those victorious headlines was a darker story playing out at high altitudes. Early B-29 crews nicknamed their engines the fire-breathing dragons for good reason. The engines were notorious for overheating and the rear row of cylinders often suffered from poor airflow, leading to thermal runaways, sudden spikes in temperature that could warp metal, crack cylinder heads and ignite fires mid-air. Some B-29s lost entire wings because of engine fires. Many pilots and crew members burned alive or had to bail out over hostile territory. Crews were instructed to shut down overheating engines during takeoff, a dangerous maneuver in an aircraft heavily loaded with bombs and fuel. Wright engineers tried to improve the airflow with cowl flaps and baffles, but the fixes were often too little, too late. The engineering gamble the R-3350 was a paradox, incredibly powerful, but dangerously temperamental. It had an innovative turbo supercharger system, using exhaust gases to spin a turbine that compressed intake air. This allowed the engine to perform well at high altitudes, but it also added mechanical complexity and heat. Even small design flaws could cascade into catastrophic failure. Internally, the R-3350 suffered from poor lubrication in the rear cylinders, inefficient cooling pathways, fragile pushrods and rocker arms, a crankcase that cracked under stress. Despite these known issues, Wright continued at mass production due to wartime urgency. By 1945, over 18,000 R3350s were installed in B-29s alone. Test pilots, engineers and combat crews voiced their concerns but the military had its eye on the bigger picture, ending the war, whatever the cost. The post-war reinvention and the Constellation crash. After World War II, the R-3350 got a second life. Modified and enhanced versions powered commercial aircraft like the Lockheed L-1049 Super Constellation, one of the most elegant airliners of the 1950s. With newer fuel injection systems and redesigned cooling mechanisms, the engine now boasted up to 3,700 horsepower. But even in peacetime, it remained a double-edged sword. In 1947, 
A transcontinental and western air TWA Lockheed Constellation crashed near Pennsylvania, killing all 50 aboard. The cause? An R-3350 engine fire that quickly spread due to magnesium parts igniting. A hellish blaze that couldn't be extinguished in mid-air. The accident led to a massive investigation and a full redesign of magnesium components. Other commercial aircraft experienced similar failures, uncommanded feathering, detonation in cylinders, or full-blown engine explosions. Pushing the limits, the turbo compound variant. Instead of retiring the engine, Wright doubled it down. In the 1950s, they introduced the R3350 turbo compound, a variant that incorporated three power recovery turbines. These were small turbines driven by the exhaust gases, feeding extra horsepower back into the crankshaft through fluid couplings. The idea was to increase fuel efficiency and power. It worked, on paper. The turbo compound could generate up to 3,700 horsepower with better fuel economy, making it a favorite for cargo planes like the Douglas DC-7. But the turbines added weight and mechanical stress and maintenance crews now had to service an engine with over 5,000 individual parts. Engine teardown intervals became shorter and the cost of upkeep ballooned. Airlines eventually grew tired of the high maintenance burden and phased out the R3350 in favor of early turboprops and jets. The engine that killed and conquered. The Wright R3350 was not merely a machine, it was a paradox born of desperation and ambition. In the crucible of war, it emerged as one of the most powerful radial engines ever created. Yet that power came at a devastating cost. It was an engine of extremes capable of pushing aircraft to incredible heights and of bringing them down in flames. During the early missions of World War II, especially in the Pacific theater, the R-3350 became infamous among bomber crews. The iconic Boeing B-29 Superfortress was meant to be a technological leap forward, a long-range, high-altitude bomber capable of reaching Japan from distant island airfields. But what pilots encountered was not just an engineering marvel, but a mechanical gamble. The rear row of cylinders in the engine's dense, compact design suffered from inadequate cooling. In tropical heat, at high altitudes, under combat stress, the engine would overheat, seize, and sometimes explode. Flames would erupt from the cowlings. Wings would shear off mid-air. Entire crews were lost not to enemy fire, but to their engines. In a cruel twist of fate, the most advanced bomber of its time was betrayed by the very innovation that powered it. The numbers were grim. In the early phases of B-29 operations, more aircraft were lost to engine failures than to Japanese fighters or anti-aircraft fire. Some airmen, aware of the engine's tendencies, would privately refer to the duplex cyclone as the fifth enemy, after the Japanese Navy, Army, Flak and weather. And yet, through all the failures, smoke and tragedy, the R-3350 did not vanish. It evolved. In the post-war years, as engineers studied the engine's catastrophic failures and pored over mission logs and crash reports, incremental improvements gave the R3350 a second chance. Redesigned cooling fins, better cow flap systems and upgraded fuel injection gave the engine new life. And in a new war, Korea and later Vietnam, the R3350 found redemption. Fitted into the Douglas A1 Sky Raider, the engine powered one of the most beloved and durable aircraft of its era. In stark contrast to its early reputation, the R-3350 was now praised for its ruggedness. Sky Raiders returned to base with bullet-riddled fuselages, shredded wings and engines that kept running. Engines that kept... Pilots told stories of limping home on one cylinder bank, of engines soaked in oil still pushing through to the runway. Where once the engine was feared, now it was trusted, even admired. The duplex cyclone became a symbol not just of brute force, but of grit and survival. It had killed, yes, but it had also conquered. 
not just enemies, but its own demons. The engine that once doomed crews in the skies over Japan now brought others home from the jungles of Southeast Asia. And in that transformation, the R-3350 earned its place, not just in aviation history, but in the hearts of those who flew behind it. It may have started as a fire breather, but it ended as a war horse. Legacy and lessons learned. The Wright R-3350's story is a lesson in the dangers of innovation under pressure. Wartime demands forced the aviation industry to push limits, sometimes recklessly. The engine's flaws were not unknown. They were simply accepted as the cost of progress. Today, a few warbirds and constellations still fly with the R-3350, maintained lovingly by restoration crews who understand its quirks. These engines are relics of a time when power came at a price, measured in melted metal, blown pistons and lost lives. The duplex cyclone may have burned too hot and lived too fast, but it gave the world some of aviation's greatest machines. Its legacy is a paradox, both a triumph of engineering and a cautionary tale of its hubris. And in airfields around the world, when an old radial starts up and the air fills with the growl of power, somewhere the spirit of the R-3350 lives on.